Welcome back to Hox Tools. I'm Tom. So another meatloaf for you. Brief one. Uh, a few items. Um, we're going to install some um, uh, wood handles and some sledgehammer heads. And I'm going to show you my uh, uh, method for making sure that uh, they never loosen up and uh, it basically becomes a kind of a permanent attachment until you decide to remove it and uh, not when the, the weather or water or anything else decides to help you. Um, so we got that. Um, got a um, uh, couple of flea market finds that were cool and a couple of uh, garage sale finds that were uh, pretty cool and kind of uh, along the lines of woodworking and uh, that kind of stuff. Also, I uh, got the Beastmeyer fence mounted on the little Delta Unisaw. And uh, we'll go check that out and um, uh, take a peek at that as well. Okay, so uh, let's get cracking. Okay, so this is the, uh, the flea market and garage sale finds. So from the flea market is, let's see. These guys are from the flea market. Um, what we got here, these are kind of cool. They caught my attention. Um, they're a uh, very small diameter kind of bottle brush, and it's a whole bunch of them. Um, they got, uh, these appear to be some kind of medical brushes. In fact, it says uh, um, cytology. Eh, haven't looked that one up yet, but uh, I'm thinking it's got to do with the urinary tract. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not sure actually. So uh, anyway, uh, they're nice little uh, little brushes. There's a whole bunch of them, so you don't feel bad about uh, wrecking them, uh, cleaning out uh, um, you know oil passages or little little spots or whatnot, and just chucking them and throwing them away. And two bucks, uh, two bucks for the box. I thought that. But well, once the guy told me that, then I looked at his pile a little harder and came up with these items here. Got some. Uh, T50 staples. This one doesn't have too many in it, but this is a size I didn't have. 9 16 This one's nearly full. Um, and then a, um, a Stanley uh, chalk line. And uh, Now I have a chalk line already, but I wanted a second one so that I could put a different color chalk on the, uh, on the string. Now, um, so this might be an interesting exercise. This one's got blue on it, and guess what color my other one is? Blue. And um, I kind of wanted to do one in black, so I don't know if you can wash the string or blow it off or what and just swap the chalk out. Um, anybody out there have that experience, uh, throw it up in the comments. Uh, if you know, It just makes more sense to replace the string. But this one's got a plastic case on it. Uh, my other one has a metal case, but anyway three bucks for all this and then we got a nice cute little shackle here a little uh, anchor screw pin ankle shackle 5 16 um, and it's not the uh, it's not the bowed type it's the U type that's a little different um, anyway I always grab shackles when I see them and um, and then this caught my attention just from uh, it's a it's a big roller out of a bearing a cylindrical bearing of some sort um, but it's odd because it's it doesn't look right to me because it's uh, uh, it looks like it's chrome plated for some reason now uh, um, so I don't know and maybe maybe it's just worn but it doesn't look seriously worn to me anyway it's a nice hard piece of steel and you know me I like shiny stuff I'm like a raccoon right so so that's uh, that's flea market then we were driving down the street and we stopped at a at a garage sale and it's a nice family that uh, is picking up and they're moving to Hawaii of all places uh, not that Hawaii is a bad place or anything like that but uh, um, seemed like a big life change to me <laughs> anyway he had some good prices and I uh, I, I asked him what, what he wanted for these he said uh, 15 bucks a piece and I went okay and I kind of scoped them out and the, the, the shoes here really show absolutely no wear. I don't know if he picked them. I don't know where he got them or if he bought them for one job and whatnot. And uh, we'll, we'll try them out here in a second. Um, I, I put an air fitting in and a couple drops of oil and we'll give us some test shots and see how they go. And then he had this F clamp. It's a Jorgensen 3x12. 
it's kind of a light duty one, but sometimes that's all you want. And uh, my calibrated eyeball says that this has a little bow to it that might need a, a little bit of gronkation uh, to get it straight. So anyway, that was uh, some uh, pretty good little uh, flea market and um, um, estate sale uh, finds for the weekend. So let's go on to the next thing. All right, so let's give it a cry. This is a... Uh, uh, these are 18 gauge narrow crown and these are half inch I got a piece of a piece of plywood here that was those were already in the uh, in the deal let's uh, let's give it a shot here I would say that 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 shoots a staple Okay, here's the depth adjustment here. Let's go a little deeper and see what that does. And it's a little deeper. Uh, go a little more. Something sounded different there. Deeper. That appears to uh, appears to work, so that's good. And this one, um, this is the 18 gauge pin nailer, and I don't think it. Yeah, it doesn't have anything in it. So I got some. These are three quarter. Give this a go. <laughs> yeah. That's, now, uh, you know, I don't have this on a regulator, so I don't know what the pressure is. It's probably got a max pressure that it wants. I'm probably well over that. Oh, no, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the zone. So, that one didn't quite go, didn't quite go flush. Let's go a little deeper. A little more. Well, I'd say uh, my expert woodworking opinion, I'd say those were worth $15 a piece. So uh, I have to look them up and see what they're worth. So I already, so just to qualify, I already have a narrow crown stapler and I already have a pin nailer. But what this allows me to do because I'm so lazy, is I can have different length. Uh, this one actually will take longer nails than my other one. I have an old Senko that only goes up to one inch. This one goes to one and a quarter. So I can put some one and a quarters in this and then run shorter ones in the other one. It's a, it's a smaller it's a smaller gun. And then a uh, narrow crown, uh, I can just have two different lengths set up or whatever. 15 bucks a piece, twist my arm, right? So anyway, I call that a, I call that a win. All right, so we got all the ingredients here for installing a nice Craigslist hickory handle into my um, um, cross peen sledge. So I got the handle, I've got a wood wedge, and I've got a metal wedge. And this is a different type of metal wedge. This actually came with the handle, but I, I prefer these round ones myself. Uh, they actually look cool, and um, they expand. Uh, radially as opposed to uh, in a uh, in a uh, one direction so uh, we're gonna use one of those and then the magic is this guy here okay and what we end up doing with this is once the handles installed we soak the uh, the end grain of the handle with this wicking uh, Loctite thread locker and that Loctite wicks into the, the tubular structure of the end grain and then hardens up and then, and it's waterproof. So it uh, becomes, uh, uh, as I would say, bomb proof. So, uh, and then heads up, um, this, I got this on Amazon. I ordered it and um, I don't know if they mislisted the price or what, 
but this is a, uh, a 50 milliliter bottle uh, that usually sells for like 50 bucks. Uh, they, this was $15. It was priced as for the little bottle. Anyway, I said, okay, well, I need some, and hey, if they send me the little bottle, I'm, you know, it's still fine, right? Well, I guess what? I got the 50 milliliter bottle for 15 bucks. So uh, check out Amazon on that, and uh, uh, jump on that deal before uh, before they change the price. <laughs> okay, all right. First things first, we're gonna do a test fit of the handle and the socket. There's usually a direction, and uh, what we're looking for is the big part of the oval and that looks like this to me and that's going to be the outside so we're going in this way and, and this one fits pretty good to start with now I don't know if you notice normally they have a split a cut already in them uh, this one doesn't and we're going to go ahead and put that cut in for the wood wedge and uh, and that's the first thing we expand in this direction and then we expand in that direction so uh, um, all right, so it starts getting, so we want about halfway, halfway down, a handy dandy scale. So we're going to cut it down about inch and a half, something like that, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. Okay. So go over to the bandsaw, put a slit in that, and then uh, come back to you. Got our slit. that way so the writing's going <laughs> so the writing's going the right way right and then uh, to knock the head down uh, I got a piece of wood on the floor so I'm just gonna use the inertia of the head I think I need that seeing how far it's driving on here okay uh, I'm gonna need to cut that slit a little deeper here so I'm, I'm making a mark uh, as to where the uh, the head fits, and then let's give it a little uh, actually, we can probably do it this way. Yep, okay. Uh, you can see where, where it engaged that, right? So, we're going to take that slit down a little further uh, so our wedge. Gets down, uh, gets down deeper. So let me do, let me do that. So you know you could probably uh, chop some of that off ahead of time, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and drive the wood wedge at this point, and I trim the length of the wood wedge off a little bit. tapered enough or what the uh, the handles didn't have the uh, wood wedges in the packet so I had some other some other uh, wood wedges that uh, yeah I think it bottomed out yeah looks like it bottomed out I don't want to take the slot any deeper so I'm going to make a wedge that's got a little more taper to it Alright, so I got a thicker wedge now, and I had some uh, quarter sawn oak that uh, uh, should make a nice, <laughs> a nice tasty wedge here. So let's uh, knock that in. Oh yeah, so what we want, so this hole is bell shaped, so it tapers and it tapers, right? So what retains the head is that that flaring inside that's forged into the eye, right? So, okay. And um, now I'm going to drive that down further. What I don't want to do is drive that down below flush because we want to sand all that off and make it nice. And uh, so, uh, let me, you know, I wasn't quite, oh yeah, this will work. I, I got a little. A little driver here. Give me a little more, a little more gronk. It's 
pretty good. Probably good for our purposes. Okay, so now I'm going to trim that off just a little bit on the sander and uh, get it a little closer to the head and then we'll apply this one and knock that one down in there and, uh, and then we'll do our Loctite deal. eyeball to get that centered up nicely. Now I'm going to use a metal hammer on this. Yeah, you know, inevitably there's always some splitting, um, but I'd rather have a secure handle than worry about some little cracks. So that's uh, Probably good enough as it is, but we're going to do the extra extra step. So I'm going to sand it down a little bit more, and then um, uh, we're going to apply the Loctite. But uh, what we want is we want the Loctite to have uh, enough volume and enough chance to get into the end grain of the wood. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. All right. So we're going to um, we're going to build a little uh, a little dam around this. using uh, hot glue and all this is is to provide a place for the uh, excess uh, uh, wicking Loctite to kind of sit. So I'll run a little uh oh my tie my weld tie in it's a little funky there so I'll let that I'll let I'm going to put another another little course on there so I have a little a little depression in there. We'll uh, shake this stuff up while we're, while we're at it. And we're using the Loctite 290 here which is the wicking grade. Now that should harden up pretty quick. <laughs> and um, let's do another another course. Oops, I better. And this 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 stuff will just knock right off when I'm uh, when I'm done playing around with this. All right, that's probably an adequate dam. And I, you know what? Never buy one of these. This is the worst hot glue gun uh, in existence. And whatever engineer in, in designed this, if I ever meet him, I'm gonna I'm gonna slap him. <laughs> it's it's terrible. Absolutely terrible. So, all right. So I wonder if. We can push this up a little bit. All right, I think we got a little. Uh, that's still kind of hot. Oops, now I've done it. Now I've done it. See, you know, you, this is a, a lesson, and you can't leave well enough alone, right? So, uh, this is bugging me that this is sitting against the. Uh, I want that exposed. Let's uh, try a different tool here. There we go. I want that wood exposed, not, I don't want hot glue. All right, we'll let this cure for a minute. Then we're going to pour some uh, wicking Loctite in there. You guys are fascinated by this. Just, you know you are. Okay. Let's 
Let's watch it for a minute. Uh, it looks like it's actually uh, taking it up pretty good. It, this uh, hammer handle is actually pretty old and it's probably really, really dry. It's about $2 worth of Loctite, right? Looks like my, my little dam is uh, maintaining itself. <laughs> Check underneath, right? <laughs> come back in a few minutes and uh, and see if uh, it needs a refill I like these new bottles actually this is pretty good it has a, a pop-off cap right and then to you don't have to cut the tip off you just pull up this ring and that um, induces the flow so uh, yeah, I really so it automatically shuts it off when you when you put the cap on which is kind of kind of nice now some uh, some ran through underneath which is actually okay because that means it's getting into all the wood along the sides and everything I so I put a little uh, I put a little diaper underneath here just to catch any that's coming through so it doesn't drool all over the handle um, but I'll, I'll add a little bit to this uh, um, as it soaks in or runs down and let's go check out that uh, Beastmeyer fence so the table saw got upgraded and uh, with the Beastmeyer fence so when I got this off from Gary uh, Gary Brown old iron machine works um, he uh, gave me a Beastmeyer fence with it now a lot of you guys a lot of you guys uh, saw that I had the Delta fence on. He said, oh, you should just get rid of that Delta fence and put the Beastmeyer on. Well, I wanted to try the Delta fence out. And um, most of you guys, were, you know, you're correct that the Delta fence is, yeah, it's, it's not a modern fence, okay? This is a lot more responsive, I would say. Uh, easy to tune for squareness. Um, but it did require me to drill and tap uh, the machine table which I you know I wanted to get a fence on it and the other one just kind of bolted on so that's why I kind of did that so anyway it's mounted um, apparently this uh, angle or it was on a different saw I believe because the, um, the these let's see that in camera there yeah um, these miter slaw miter slaw um, miter saw notches or miter slot notches didn't didn't line up and you can see this is kind of off center uh, fortunately I know somebody that had the milling machine um, and that uh, uh, could extend that uh, that down for me a little bit because uh, this is the nominal zero position with the blade there's a little there's a little tick mark in the fence there so that kind of drives where the thing mounts now of course you can put it anywhere you want it but then you just have to calibrate the um, the scale um, Anyway, this had a little bit of rust on it. I cleaned up the uh, the little trackways uh, real nice and put some frog lube on them so they don't uh, they don't rust. And uh, I got myself a nice forest blade. Uh, by the way, these were on sale on Grizzly for sixty dollars less than what I could buy it at Woodcraft for uh, or from Forest. So this is a forty-eight tooth uh, eighth inch kerf, uh, normal kerf. Uh, blade and then I got the uh, uh, I wanted the stabilizer too so then I made a, a fancy uh, top washer for it there so uh, that's the washer I made it's made out of 1144 um, stress proof uh, with a with a relieved uh, rim and nice and flat and Bob's your uncle so anyway more table saw action and um, Anyway, I, I've made a few cuts with the fence, and it's good. It's a good fence. And then I have uh, um, my, uh, <laughs> my, uh, is that in camera? 
Yeah, it's in camera. So this is my uh, my homage to uh, machine work, right? So if I make a cut and I measure it with the calipers and it's not quite what I want, then I can just, I can bop it a few thousandths and just keep track of it. So uh, <laughs> there you go. So the other thing I wanted to show you guys um, is something that I'm, I don't know, reasonably excited about. And it's not the, it's not the sander, it's the, uh, the light bulb that I got here. So this, uh, what I put in there is I put in one of these GE LED, um, it's an indoor floodlight, okay? So it's a 60 watt equivalent, but it's an LED. Um, anyway, I bought one of these uh, at Target, and I said, oh, you know what? I am just done with incandescent lights, right? And they're hot, they burn out, just when you don't need them to burn out, and etc. So let me take this one out so you guys can get a look at it. Uh, and it's pretty, this thing's pretty compact. So what's it guaranteed for? Um, oh, 22 years. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know, we'll see about that. But uh, um, um, anyway, it projects a, uh, hard to do uh, left, um, it projects a beam pretty far, right? So now, um, come on, there it goes. Um, I don't have to be up close. I can kind of back off from uh, this so I can get my big head in there. Um, so anyway, I'm pretty excited about that. And I bought some quote-unquote cheaper equivalents uh, on Amazon to try. And they seem to be fine too. So... Um, if you can't find those or uh, they're too expensive, this, this was a little bit pricey, I would say. These were much more reasonable. And um, so I put these in a couple places in the shop and, uh, and so far so good. I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, it's not, you know, it's barely warm when I'm almost touching it, but it projects a nice beam into the, into the work area. And, uh, um, you know, Bob's your uncle. So... LED uh, indoor floodlight. So I got some Craigslist finds, um, or just pictures from Craigslist of interesting items that I saw in the last week or so. And this first one is a Baldor pedestal grinder. Uh, it's about 12 inch wheel diameter, two inch wide. And this one dates, uh, looking at the pedestal, and that's kind of the giveaway here, uh, I want to say 50s, 60s, 70s, eh, probably not 50s, uh, 60s or 70s, maybe the 80s, something like that. Um, the newer ones um, have um, uh, formed sheet metal bases, and that kind of dates them a little bit. I, I'm no expert in dating them, but uh, just uh, looking at the styling, uh, styling cues on this. Anyway, caught my attention because it's a nice grinder. Um, looks like it's got some homemade uh, spark catcher uh, tubes on the bottom. Uh, this one was in Petaluma, uh, San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, I want to say it was five or six hundred bucks, something like that. So it was pre actually a pretty good deal uh, if you're in the market for a, a you know pretty serious uh, um, pedestal grinder. So this next one here is. Uh, uh, it's a delta drill press and i got a couple pictures but uh you know it's kind of a uh, run-of-the-mill you know old school uh drill press with the kind of the bullet head there but what caught my attention is what i call the smiley face of shame on the table and this is uh folks that uh that poke through their workpiece and then poke into the table and since these tables are um, on uh, on a, a cylindrical column, they can swivel, right? And well, guess what? That's the radius of the swivel, right there. <laughs> anyway, I always thought this was funny because uh, all the high this might have come out of a high school, for all I know. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's got the smiley smiley face of shame there, and I think ultimately the tables just you know break in half and uh, and fall apart but uh, anyway that was pretty cool so so this next one here is is kind of cool it's a um, it's a shop crane it's a little mobile shop crane uh, my friend Dennis Pentazas sent me a picture of this I guess it was on Facebook marketplace back east uh, near Chicago somewhere 
um, thirteen hundred bucks, I guess, was the price. Uh, but it's just you know kind of old school looking and uh, kind of an interesting design. Uh, the what's interesting about this one too is that uh, the uh, capacity. So this has a five thousand pound capacity, which kind of surprised me um, for kind of a mobile shop crane. And you can see on the diagram here that there's a uh, uh, you can rearrange the uh, the pulley a little bit to uh, uh, get some mechanical advantage there. So, um, and then you know it's, it's basically kind of like a pallet jack, and um, and then it has a a big. I don't think that's a stock hand wheel there, but somebody put that on there so they could go a little faster. Uh, and then it's got a kind of a worm drive capstan uh, setup. Um, to uh, take up the cable on a, on a drum, a, a cast drum there, right? Uh, you know, it needs a new cable and it needs some love, but uh, um, it's definitely a, uh, um, you know, pretty serious uh, piece of kit there. And then it's weird, you know, this stuff comes up, right? Um, I bump into another one. Uh, a friend of mine picked up a... Uh, and this, this is not it. He picked up a big Wilton vise recently, a, uh, a big 8-inch combination vise, which you just don't see those very often. And he got a hell of a deal on it. But I was trying to research it a little bit uh, for him, and, um, and I bumped into this crane here, uh, which is uh, uh, even cooler, I think, right, than the first one. The lattice one is kind of nice, but this one's... It's a little more elegant, I think, and um, uh, and then it has a uh, a chain. Uh, it's a chain hoist as opposed to a cable hoist, right? Let's see if I got a second. No, I don't have a second picture of that. So anyway, this one's kind of cool. And the so the story here is the guy was selling the vice and he was hanging it from his shop crane and uh, to kind of show it. And uh, but it's kind of a cool uh, uh, kind of a cool thing. Anyway, that's it for Craigslist Finds, and uh, I'll catch you guys later. All right, that's about all I got for this week, and I uh, hope to see you next week. With uh, We'll take a look at the, uh, um, the two heads that I mounted after they've had a chance to fully cure, and then uh, we'll uh, test drive the Beastmeyer fence with all the new uh, uh, table saw accessories. So. Uh, Thanks for watching and uh, see you next week.